Anyway, yeah. our next guest is a young man who has defied the odds in almost every direction. He went over to Europe to continue chasing his NASCAR dream, as many do. He's got more loyal followers on TikTok than the population of Reno, Nevada. That's over half a million. He loves chicken nuggets. And he recently won the Comcast Community Award for simply being a great guy. We've got Ryan Vargas here on the Money Lap Live. Welcome to the show, Ryan. We appreciate you coming up here, buddy. I think they're playing. Hey. Wrong. Oh, no, you are here. There we go. There Congrats. Go. Hi. Congrats you for the award and welcome. Yeah. We got good. you, man. You guys we got you. Me? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. No, I appreciate you guys having me. This is uh, this is super neat. I, I'm a fan of what y'all do. Uh, thank you for the really cool intro. It made me sound a lot cooler than I am. Um, but no, it's just been a, a crazy last 365 days, and the next 365 is probably going to be even crazier. Um, so it's been good. Definitely, definitely. We appreciate you jumping on here, man. Um, you, I saw you. I could see. So, I, for the viewers out there and the listeners, I can see the guest sort of before you guys come on. I have a really cool trick set up here. I could see you nodding in approval of our horsepower discussion. Right? You were listening to some of what John Hunter had to say about this test. Before we jump into everything else, I just why, why were you nodding in approval? Why, what was that? Well, I mean, I mean, a perfect example of and Landon, you probably you know more about this because you've actually driven the race cars. You look at 2014, right? And it's kind of a meme at this point. You know, people online will share the infamous clip of uh, Chicago Land in the 2014 fall race where they were ripping the fence and pulling sliders and going three wide on each other. And people are like, man, that was so great. And that was when the cars had a ton of horsepower, but you also got to think that's also when they had some of the biggest spoilers and splitters on them. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of downforce, a lot of drag, a lot of everything, but they had that horsepower. So that kind of almost to me answers that question of no matter the downforce that you put on it or downforce you take away, it's still it still needs that power. Now, I think we kind of went mm -hmm. in a good direction when you look at like 2016 to 2018. I think those were, I think overall the racing was solid and it made it, in my opinion, at least it looked easier to follow. I don't know. I, I, I know I've raced a cup car, so Lady probably attest because he <laughs> drove, drove those, that generation and same with you, Parker. But um, I know from the Xfinity car, which still runs big motor, small blade or big-ish motor, um, that you can kind of run up on guys easier and pass versus when I ran the K&N series, that still runs big blade and, and little motors too. So, yep. yeah. So I, well, that's a really good point. And I'll, I'll tell you a little story on that and, and my experience with them. So the, that big motor, it just allows you to recover, right? That's what you're talking about. And th those are the examples that you're giving. It, it, it allows you to recover when you make a mistake and you lose a little bit of time, you can always go to the throttle and drive out of it, right? Or let's say it's not a mistake. Let's say you get arrow tight or arrow loose in traffic. You have the horsepower to, to recover from that and get back to where you were. And because because let me tell you, we we look back on those days like they were the glory days of of intermediate racing. And maybe they were from this perspective, but we as drivers were complaining about arrow you know, dirty air just as much back then as we are now. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to sugarcoat the past by any means. Um, uh, but that it does seem like that horsepower allows you to recover. Um, and then a, one really interesting s story from personal experience that was a huge eye opener for me. Um, during that time period, I was testing in the sim. This is the early, early days of, of sim testing. And I was doing a test, for Ganassi at the time. And we were doing what they called a sensitivity test. So we weren't working on any specific setups. We weren't working on any specific models. It was, they were literally turning the big knobs, right? So I would run, make a run where they turn the horsepower up and they turn the horsepower down. They turn the downforce up, they turn the downforce, things you couldn't do in real life, right? But they were yeah. trying to find like, hey, where where should we find speed, right? Should we spend R and D on horsepower and go get, you know, two more horsepower, or should we, you know, spend R and D money on downforce or drag, um, or CG. So they raised and lowered the weight distribution of the car, um, the center of gravity, um, nice little clip there at, at me, Chicago spinning Damn. Justin Agar out. I remember that moment. <laughs> Just clean him out. Um, I was very angry with Agar at the moment. At, 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 I did that absolutely intentionally. I might've even said something on the radio. 
um, in, in modern day NASCAR, oh, I could have gotten suspended for that. Um, so as focusing on this topic, cause this is a really good story. So we were doing the sensitivity test and we were doing the test at Chicago. So I'm glad you're playing clips from Chicago. Um, in the simulator, in the, in the driver and loop simulators and the manufacturer sims, there's no tire fall off. There's no weather variation. So you can run in theoretically, you can run the same lap over and over and over and over again. Okay. So when we reduced horsepower by some degree, not a ton, but some degree, when we reduced horsepower, I could run so consistently like I'm talking and I was, you know, in the zone. I had been in the sim all day, like in a, in a really great spot. I could run almost identical lap times, 10, 12 laps in a row, 30. Let's say that at Chicago at the time, maybe I was running 30.3 second laps. I could run a 30.30 or a 30.31, 10 laps in a row, like that accurately when they reduced horsepower. When they increased horsepower, I might my, my variation and my consistency was I could not be that um, accurate, right? I might my potential to go faster was better, so I might run a thirty point one nine, um, but I still might run a thirty point three zero every second or third lap. My consistency was way tougher. I couldn't just turn up the horsepower and then run 30.19s as accurately as I ran 30.30s. So that that was an eye opener for me that was like, hey, more horsepower is more variation in lap time, more driver variation. It was harder for me to be accurate. It was harder for me to be consistent. And those are the things that to, to drivers, we, we have a hard time articulating this, but those are the things that translate to good racing. Right, those are the things that translate to passing, and um, it's why we love dirt sprint car racing and jumping the yeah. cushion and then driving out of it. I'll let our guests talk because I'm just sitting here going, "Yeah, you're <laughs> really going on here." Hey, Ryan, yeah. you're gonna pick well, on I mean, all the things he just said over the last 55 well, minutes. I mean, well, I'll, I'll, I'll finish off with this, and I think this is something that, like, I kind of noticed, especially in the last two years that we moved to the next gen platform. Is you look at the road racing. I, I'd even look at like from 2018 because I would say that's that was the start of the the change when they first made the, mm -hmm. the 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 move to the charlotte roval and started making that emphasis on road racing uh especially in 2020 and 2021 when they did the daytona road course added coda you know now we have the chicago street race you know the the reason why i think a lot of fans fell in love with the road racing at the time was because it was what we it, it was the cars that we grew up with the stock cars of of then that were made to go on ovals you know that's what those cars were really designed to do they're designed to run ovals they are oval platform race cars you know and you make them road race they're not going to really race as good and so it makes it harder to drive and it makes the drivers have to get up get up on the wheel and try different things now with the next gen platform it seems it favors more towards that gt style or gt uh a platform of race car um again this is from the opposite outsider's perspective uh and from people who <laughs> i've talked to so um Taking it, taking it with a great assault, but um, <laughs> it just seems that now that the car drives better on road courses, like it handles better. I remember when they first did the first test for the next gen, they were like, oh my gosh, the next gen's a second and a half faster on the Roval than it was with the Gen 6. And my first thought to that was like, oh no, this is oh, no. really <laughs> struggle. Like it's cool We're that struggling. it's faster. Yeah, but it's cool that it's faster, but that means it's driving better. And that's not what we need yep. on road courses. Hey, Ryan, so I want to take the conversation in a little different direction and appreciate yep. you chiming in there with all those opinions. Opinions are always welcome, by the way, here on the Money Lab yes. Live. Always welcome. We we accept them, and everyone has one, and you're allowed to have it here. We won't discriminate against that. Uh, you won a the Wendell Scott Trailblazer Award in 2016, 2017. Yep. But as I mentioned in your intro, this uh, at the NASCAR Awards Banquet, you won the community, the Comcast Community Award. Um, and I believe we actually have the video explaining what you want it for and what you uh, were doing mm -hmm. to get that award. So I think we actually want to play it here yeah. and let all our viewers watch it, let the podcast mm -hmm. listeners listen to it. It's a great video, a touching story. Mm -hmm. We'll more, learn more about you, and then we can talk about it uh, on the other side. I think they got it teed up. This sounds good. Let's do it. I have this really cool scar on the side of my head that I look at every morning and I tell myself that I'm here for a reason. 
Craniosynostosis is a skull deformation that affects one in every two to 3,000 kids, myself being one of them, when your soft spot closes and causes the sutures in your skull to actually fuse together. If you don't have surgery to have that opened, the brain cannot grow. So he had to have surgery at 11 months old. He was in the hospital in the NICU for about six days. Very fortunate because he only had to have one surgery. Many, many kids who are faced with this have to have multiple surgeries and their conditions are way worse. So he was extremely lucky. The bullying, the, the harassment that some of these people get is unbelievable. I've been able to meet so many fantastic individuals with my partnership with FACES, the National Craniofacial Association. They help raise awareness for the many, many different types and forms of craniofacial differences. I hope that me having the place I have in the sport and being able to bring FACES to the forefront is, is what I want to do. Brian and I met through LinkedIn when he reached out about four or five years ago wanting to help faces. I wanted to learn more about myself. I wanted to learn more about other people who may have been through the same thing I have. And I just kind of made a you know, promise to them. I was like, look, I'm, I want to help you guys. I want to grow this because I do have this place in the sport where I can bring faces to people. Our mission is to help children and adults with craniofacial differences to provide financial aid for travel. Many times these families have to travel to the other side of the country to get to the medical professional that they need. If kids and adults can get to these surgery, it will make them more normal or they can live more of a fulfilled life. Being a board member and helping out on the media side and promotion side, you know, I've been able to put faces on race cars. They were on my TikTok car, they were on my Reddit car. They were featured prominently on some of my starts back in 2020 and just as recently as this year. Hey kids, this is Ryan Vargas. I'm a NASCAR driver. I was born with craniosynostosis. I tell you guys about a really cool summer camp happening this July called Faces Camp. Faces Camp really started based on that idea that if you have extra medical needs, you can go to this regular camp and you can experience independent while experiencing a normal everyday experience for any kid their age. A lot of craniofacial kids and campers, they don't get to have that independence, whether it's their parents are always with them or medical professionals. This really lets them grow as individuals, learn new things, and create friendships. I think a lot of the campers saw him as I can be like him. I think a couple of the girls had a little crush on him. That was Ryan <laughs> as a camp counselor. They're a small group who are putting every bit of their effort, every bit of their resources into helping kids. I remember we were going over the financial side of things and we were talking about how they weren't meeting the mark to help make Faces Camp happen. It just bummed me out because these kids, they just had such a good time. They're going to put this directly into helping those kids to put on another fantastic Faces Camp to help with the grants, to organize more events, and that's the most important thing to me. The positivity that came from Ryan is hope. I think a lot of people don't have hope when it comes to having a craniofacial facial condition. There's stories that I've heard of people who questioned if they'd make it to adulthood. And that, to me, matters a whole lot more than my story. If I can at least help these kids, you know, find that hope or get, you know, excited about, you know, what's coming, what's next, you know, they can live a normal life, that's a win. And so I try and do that anytime I have the opportunity. I don't want to raise awareness for me, I want to raise awareness for them. My man. Yeah. Great work. That was cool. I even have a, uh, That's awesome. I got a little surprise for the viewers too. Here's the actual um, trophy. Uh, oh, it's very heavy. cool. Wow. It's heavy. This oh thing, gosh. I think it's That's like nice. 35, 40 pounds. It's like, it, like, huh. it even has a little holograph. I feel scared holding this. Um, <laughs> that is a nice trophy. Yeah, it is. What, a a, nice what, trophy. An, what an amazing uh, uh, recognition. And, Thank uh, you. That's pretty cool, That's Ryan. almost, Landon, that is almost as good as your uh, trophy from your winning the bus race at Charlotte. Yes. Uh, yes. Almost almost as nice in quality. Yeah. <laughs> so. No. Yeah. But it was. It was man, uh, that it has was to be a really fun. cool feeling, though. Yeah. No, it was really yeah, cool. It was man. really cool. Um, I mean, the, the, the best part about this is that it has nothing to do with race cars on track. It has everything about, has everything to do with what 
faces, uh, the National Ukrainian Facial Association does for the families, does for, you know, to raise awareness and also does for all the kids who attend their summer camp or any of their other uh, big events throughout the year. So, um, like I said, that, I think that's the coolest part about it. You know, it's it's it, it impacts lives and, and more more yeah. more so than not. And you you were there because you are a race car driver. I think we should yeah. talk some racing as well. Uh, yes. You got to do something that neither Landon nor I have done. And yes. that is race in the NASCAR Euro, NASCAR Euro Series this past yep. year. Um, you and I talked about it a little bit. I believe at Martinsville's last time we were chatting. But yeah. for the viewers out there, don't know. First of all, explain the series, what it is, what that was. You know, like when people think of NASCAR, they think of America, right? But their yeah. NASCAR has expanded to the NASCAR Euro Series. There's a Brazil Series now. There's the NASCAR Mexico Series. So, what was this experience like uh, for you going over there? Yeah, so the experience really going over there was, I, I'm going to tell you this too, the NASCAR fans out in Europe are just as crazy and excited as NASCAR fans here are. I went over to the fan zone after uh, the Saturday race in Germany where we finished we finished 10th, got, out, got off track and had an autograph session thing. So I go to the fan zone. There's dudes wearing Kyle Busch jackets. There's dudes wearing Budweiser 8 <laughs> jackets. There's country music playing. This one guy was frying corn dogs. And there was like diecast <laughs> retailers. Like it felt like I was at a NASCAR race, which was really, really cool. Um, and and I think the best part about it is it's, you know, it's pure stock car racing, just kind of like at, at a very, it, it is a grassroots, you know, series, I would say it's, you know, but at the same time it is NASCAR. It's, you know, it's bringing NASCAR stock car racing to overseas, uh, taking them. I mean, you saw the two races I did, uh, Osterschlieben in Germany, um, and then Zolder in Belgium, a very historic racetrack. Um, and it was really fun. They run two divisions. They run the Euro NASCAR Pro, uh, which is the class I ran in, and they also have Euro NASCAR Two. Uh, but I believe there's some name changes happening. Um, but there's some. It's just. It, it was really fun. So uh, to give a little bit of the specs on these cars, uh, apparently they're very similar to the Pinty's cars. I've not seen the Pinty's cars up close. So again, uh, grain yep. of salt. <laughs> um, but you know they're they're a bit. You know they have a bit less power. Uh, they have about 450 horsepower uh, to the rear tires. Um, spec parts all the way around um everybody runs the same equipment everybody mm. has the same um engine same suspension pieces same everything really the biggest difference is who puts them together who sets them up and then who's driving them and yeah it, it was it was impressive to me to see the quality of teams um it was impressive to, to me to see the obviously the turnout was incredible apparently brands hatch this year had like 50 55 thousand people show up um wow you know, yeah, it's a big deal over there. Um, and then also, like, the hospitality was great. Every team had, like, you know, like, when you go to IMSA race, they have, like, the tents, like, that kind of go over, like, their hospitality stuff. It's just like that. Like, it's – it was honestly – it felt – it felt much bigger, you know, being there. Um, and so hats off to, you know, Jerome and his team um, out, who run the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series because it's a – it's a really well put together series. Um, it's I, I, I was at the banquet, uh, you know, cheering its praises um, just because I feel like it's kind of like NASCAR's hidden underrated gem mm -hmm. just because of the fact they go yeah. to these, they go to, they go to some of the, some incredible racetrack. I mentioned Brands Hatch, uh, Zolder, you know, they're bringing an oval back with the Netherlands next year. Um, I mean, there's, they're bringing wow. NASCAR racing to some really historic uh, and unique racetracks that people don't expect NASCAR racing to be. And I think that's really, really cool um, as a race fan as, and as a driver. You know, I when I ran, um, love when I place. went to, <laughs> when I went to Goodwood um, and, and drove at the festival of speed there, I mean, they were, they loved our cars. They love seeing yeah. the big loud V8s. I mean, that, it was like kind of part nostalgic and rare for them to see. And um, I, I could imagine watching, you know, stock car racing at its best uh, is a is, is a pretty cool thing. It, are, is the racing on TV over there or um, or is it just bring a huge crowd to the races? Yeah. So all the racing is streamed on YouTube um, and it's pretty cool. Like it's like like because of that, it's free for everybody to see um obviously mm -hmm. because it's in europe their races are pretty early in the morning uh they roll off sometime around uh seven to eight a.m you know eastern standard time so if you're on the west coast sorry got to get up a lot, yep. a lot earlier <laughs> um but it's 
and one thing I'll say too, you know, like I mentioned, I did mention, you know, they don't have as much power and stuff like that, you know, a lot of spec parts, but because of that behind the wheel, you actually have to make up a little bit of that difference. Kind of like we were talking about earlier, you know, you have to drive the snot out of them. Um, and it like, mm -hmm. I found myself pushing the car beyond its limits for the first time. Like, cause you look at, this is a good video to show too, because they kind of show some of the highlights, but I mean, the, the way these cars are, you know, you, you can really, really get into each other, really race hard. And it is FIA sanctioned. So i um, sorry, Parker, there are track limits somewhere. And oh, you no. also somewhere, <laughs> some places, some places now, like, uh, if, if that's they, not if my NASCAR. It, are, so are we now, are we gonna have a track limits discussion here or you could you could track out, <laughs> no 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 you can no. track out on exits no but uh if you look at yeah. we're gonna get to the chicane right here you're gonna see it right here they just don't want more than four tires below that curb on the left they, that's like oh, they're like, okay it's kind of like fine. it's kind of like the NASCAR track you don't want to cut it yeah yeah they don't yeah, want you yeah, cutting you guys it. are still able um, to put tires on in the grass a little bit and that sort of thing that's 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 good track limits we're good with that yeah it was like it was kind of like a exactly um but it's yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is too like i mentioned you know you're you're pushing the car very hard you're having to you're having to you know be aggressive with the pass passes aggressive with the moves you know um i found myself like i said you know pushing the car beyond its limits um in some occasions i made one mistake i think this is from race one i i was holding on to um I was holding on to eighth for a minute and then coming out of one of the sweeper corners i got off into the dirt with my left sides and I was like, man, and you know, because you you're doing that. And because like I mentioned a little bit of the power difference, I got just high sided by like two cars and I was like, dang it. And I had to settle in 10th. Um, but it's really impressive. A lot of these guys have some incredible racing backgrounds. Um, I know my teammate, uh, the, my, you know, satellite team, I guess you could say a team Blake, I'm on race planet. Um, uh, we, he, I'm sorry, say Formula that name two. one more time. Team Blake, say, say the team. Bleak Team Blickamolen, Blickamolen, um, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah, race, uh, planet. race planet. No, I, yeah, race planet. Okay, yeah, I like that race, name, planet. race planet. I drive. Yeah, for food so they have like a USA in the Chuck series. You drive for the planet of racing. I ra so I drive for the know. race planet. Um, so yeah, you yeah, may have it, a country of food. It. I have a planet of racing. Yeah, um, that's, but that's bigger. <laughs> uh, Gorelli, uh, Gorelli is, is his name. He ran Formula Two. And was very successful. Hmm. You know, the only reason why he wasn't there is just because, obviously, as any racing series, it's expensive. He ran Indy Lights. He's come from a very successful GT racing career. You know, there, uh, Giorgio Maggi, another driver. He ran. He won the Twenty Four Hours of Zolder. Um, there's, you know, FIA champions that race in the Euro Series, um, just because they love it. And it's like it's it's kind of funny <laughs> to me because we we did uh, Zolder. We had some some folks out from other uh, GT uh, you know teams out from Germany could they be welcome to them to the track and they were looking at the cockpit of the car and there are three switches total <laughs> and the yeah. tack and like obviously water temp and all that stuff and they said that's it <laughs> and I was like yeah that's it <laughs> um but it's and also it's H pattern H pattern gearbox look at me I'm saying gearbox now um you know H pattern <laughs> four speed um it's just pure stock car racing and it's really cool so what do you think about for next year? Do you know yet? What's the plan? Try to get back over there and uh, I have, I, and do keep doing what's your, what's on your mind? You know, I have a couple, you know, different, you know, opportunities, right? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've had to, the way, the reason why I did a lot of the things I did this year was because I just wanted to have a bit of a change of pace. I wanted to make sure that, you know, anything I did, I could really focus on the activation on the sponsorship side, like with these guys, critical path, I've traveled now all over the country, you know, with them. I obviously now they were, they were on my Euro series car, you know, traveled the globe, uh, representing them. Um, and it's been an absolute blast to kind of work with them and, and grow those partnerships. And same thing with all the other sponsors I've been fortunate to work with and, you know, taking, uh, and I'm sure you guys can maybe attest to this a little bit, but sometimes you got to take a bit of a, a step back in some ways to make us make a couple steps forward. And I definitely had to do that last year. Um, I really, I have a note on my desk in my room and it says, screw it. It doesn't say screw, um, drive everything, have fun. And nice. that's what I, that's what I set out to do this year. I set out to drive everything and have fun. And I accomplished everything that I wanted to do. Um, the only thing I, you know, selfishly would say here and say is that I wish I could have done a few more races, but you know, 
at the end of the day, you know, as a race car driver, you always want to do more. Um, but got a top 10 in the truck series, never ran trucks this year until this year, I should say, uh, ran, you know, had plenty of really good speed and races where I had a lot of speed in the truck, um, getting used to a car, a, a vehicle that I'm not at all accustomed to because I ran the Xfinity car for three or four years, um, tra traveled overseas. So, um, basically the fun having experience continues to next year. There's a lot of really cool things that I'm working on, you know, whether it be overseas, whether it be here in the States, um, we're very close to getting the ink on paper and having it dry. Um, I, I feel really good about some of the things that we're doing. Um, but like I said, that the goal remains the same, have fun and drive everything. Um, so if you see me driving, if you see me driving a Euro car or an Xfinity car or a monster <laughs> truck or a boat, um, I'm just, now I'm having fun. Uh, I'm so a big manifest. Does guy. everything? And so I'm gonna. Um, well, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna say I <laughs> whole, wholeheartedly agree with writing something down, manifesting it. Uh, what do you want to say, Landon? What were you gonna ask? Do, does driving everything include pixel cars? Yes. Yes. I race you yes. too. Tell Wonderful. us what, what uh, do you have going on there. I, I I think you got a big show uh, tonight, or is it tonight? Uh, uh, it's tomorrow. Um, yeah. So I'm. Uh, so well. Uh, core is obviously a big league that I do, uh, Monday night racing. I run that league uh, and these guys are represented in there too. Critical path. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, we've been able to, I've been able to do a lot on there. Um, I've started to enter sweaty status, um, of just, you know, running as much as I do. And, you know, uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun to do that. You know, it's, it's a good way to kind of decompress while also, you know, still getting that racing bug. Um, been able to work with, as you see the background, kind of the Charlotte Phoenix. That's the team I'm on, uh, you know, on the esports side and the eNASCAR side. And there's some other things that I'm working on with iRacing. Um, I will also say for those, for the sim racers that are potentially watching this, we are very close to making eTruck Night 3 happen. So, Parker and Landon, your invites are extended. Hey. Um, cool. eTruck Night Round 3 is, it's, it, I, I would say it's almost a surefire go for being in the near future. So, um, it'll be fun. We'll have, we'll have a lot of fun with that. I, awesome. I do want to ask one more question about it, and then I'll let Parker yeah. ask you the question of the day. It, just to touch one more bit on iRacing and, and um, esports. What do you think about the oval update that's coming? Have you driven it, or is there you know any? Uh... So the specifics of it, it it's mo it's mainly to try and help with the multi groove, right? Is that what it is? Just to kind of refresh mm -hmm. me a little bit. I think um, so. so yeah. yeah, I think they're kind of bringing back the dynamic track. So if I you're not, I mean, if you're not a uh, I don't know what all is. Uh, Parker probably might know more about it right now. Um, but I basically, there's yeah, basically to back in 2017. In well, in 2017, we had that amazing dynamic track that potentially was a little uh, thought to be too dramatic, you know, not very realistic, too dramatic. Mm -hmm. But it was epic. You'd go to a racetrack and the rubber lay down, and you'd have to move grooves at Bristol and Dover, and it was awesome. All the mm -hmm. mile and a halfs. And then that went away over the last couple of years. They had dynamic track, but it just didn't work. And it sounds like in the latest oval update, there's an attempt to try and sort of when you talk about sensitivity, you were talking about earlier in the sim, like turn that up yeah. or, or just make it happen yeah. better or more realistically. So we'll see. Um, anyway, not to totally derail this conversation yeah. here. But yeah. <laughs> good, no, I, I look forward I, to your event. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, but no, I th I'm a big fan of that. I mean, nothing makes me more mad than go loading up a race at Homestead and having to run the bottom. Um, oh, yeah, um, it's rough. It's rough, man. It's rough. But, um, you know, uh, iRacing's done really well with trying to fix some things. I know they added the, I added, they added some ways to kind of have like an arrow cushion, I guess, at some of the ovals. I don't, I've, I don't know. I've tried it. I, I never feel it. I, it really just felt like, uh, for NR people it felt like NR grip lanes. That's kind of what it felt like. Um, mm -hmm. you know, running the don't wall, worry. like in the, well, the manufacturer sims have attempted to do it as well, and it feels pretty much the same way. So, at times, yeah, it's it's an like, odd sensation to make happen. That one, a really odd sensation. Um, yeah, like I I know. got up there, I got up there a couple times, and it's like okay, it has grip. It doesn't feel like a like a like I'm getting sideways, and all of a sudden it's catching it. It just kind of feels like mm -hmm. it's I'm just turning in, and it's like oh okay, it's just there's more grip here. Um, yep. The, you know, like you look cushion. at Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like, it's like you go to old Atlanta. Like we ran a, I ran a gen four race there this week and it was like, Oh, okay. You can just run. Like if it just felt like if you moved up yep. for every lane, you moved up, it gained a certain percent, percent of grip. Like, Oh, this lane is, this lane is 
two two or three percent more grippy. This lane is yeah. six or seven percent more grippy. Like it just kind of felt like that. It, it wasn't like anything different. Um, so, but well, I, I'm, I got, I'm a big fan. We got to. Uh, I, I that's and it. If it goes the way it was in 2017, we're all better for it because it was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, we do have to let you go, but before we let you go, yeah. we have a question of the day, as Lane alluded to. Uh, you're gonna love this one. It fits right in your mantra. So, if you had the choice and had to choose one, would you drive an F1 car at Monaco or an Indy car at Indianapolis Motor Speedway Oval? Mmm. So, you know, the race car driver in me, right? So I'm gonna. The race car driver means like, man, go to Monaco. Like, oh my God, that sounds incredible, right? But the race fan in me, like the guy who grew who up until he was 11 years old was watching on the sidelines and still to this day does the same thing. Um, I would almost say Indy just because I, I've dreamed of racing on the oval, whether it be a stock car or an, any type of car. Um, I've yet to actually drive on the track in any fashion. Um, and so to me, to have the experience of going 200 miles an hour into a corner, whatever, well, an Indy car, uh, 220 or 230, that just sounds absolutely nuts. So as much as I would love to do Monaco, I've, and even then I feel like I'd be better at Monaco, but I, I think in the Indy car at Indianapolis would be just, it'd be like a life fulfillment type thing. Great love answer. I, Great I, answer. Assume, I was thinking I assume for a Monaco second that we're, all the way through. I was afraid that we would need to handicap this question for the rest of our um, <laughs> guests because, you know, if it was going to be too easy of a Monaco for everybody, I, I was trying to think of ways to handicap the question, but that was a really, really good um, and well thought out answer. Appreciate that. Yeah. And you, yeah. you actually, you, you did realize what, I, what we were trying to do with that question, which is one, obviously driving an F1 car, Monaco would be cool, but you can't really push the car. You'd be in the barrier. You know, it's going to be really tough mm -hmm. to really get the fullness out of the car. Meanwhile, the fastest car or the fastest you'll ever go in a closed circuit on a race car is Indianapolis Motor Speedway in qualifying configuration in car. So, you know, you mm -hmm, mentioned yeah. 230. They're doing 245 or 243 into turn three last year, <laughs> depending on where the wind is. Um, 240 into turn I, one. Like, that is that. getting it. So do you want to go fast? I don't know about that, man. You'll fast. You, you made a good point there, and I know that you and I will have our chance to um, yes, share our answer in this later. So I will um, – I have a unique – uh answer to this that we'll save for the end of the show perfect if i remember ryan i'll write it down appreciate yep. you coming on buddy congratulations Absolutely. thanks so much look forward to seeing what you uh what you're racing in next year man that sounds good i appreciate you guys y'all have a good show thank you hey parker Kligerman here i haven't won every race i've competed in i know it's a shocker but one thing i'm hoping to do get you to subscribe like and hit the bell icon below because that helps us make this awesome money lap content also join us for the live show wednesdays 12 to 3 p.m eastern time we dive into all motorsports live here on the money lap youtube channel please join us we need more than just our moms watching